The European Union today vowing to prevent a Greek default, providing Greece passes and implements a budget on budget cuts, of course. But despite the EU pledge, many believe that a default by Greece is really just a matter of time. Well, let's ask my next guest how all this could affect the U.S. economy and markets. Charles Ortel is the managing director at Newport Value Partners. He was among those who recognized the credit market collapse early on. Charles, good to have you with us. Thanks for coming in. Thanks just for before on. we get to Europe, I just want to pick up on something that Danny Blanchflower from Dartmouth College was saying related to a speech that Timothy Geithner, the Treasury Secretary, gave before students at Dartmouth College today. He said that he believes that there is compromise on negotiations related to the debt ceiling. Now, we know that Vice President Biden has previously met with Republican congressional leaders to try to hammer out some kind of compromise. What is your take on what this means? And whether we're going to get that kind of negotiated settlement. I uh, don't take a lot of comfort from words that come out of either Secretary Geithner or Vice President Biden's mouth having to do with the economy because they've been so wrong for so long. I think the problem that we face in the United States of America is not purely a federal government problem. It's not even a government problem. It's a total across the economy debt problem that the level of total debt at f roughly 50 trillion is way too high in relation to true private sector income. And to get to the heart of the problem, we've got to get serious about two things. We've got to figure out a way to cut the level of absolute debt, and then we've got to create the conditions to attract capital, keep capital in the country, so that the level of private sector income can go up. And we're doing neither of those things. I think it's a lot of talk. It's a lot of political theater. But as in the past cases under this administration, and indeed under the previous administration, there are no details. There are no hard details to sink your teeth into. And that's why the markets are jittery. The markets are getting extremely concerned. So do you believe that by August 2nd there will be some kind of negotiated agreement between the president and the Democrats and the Republicans in Congress to at least raise the debt ceiling above, what is it, $14.3 trillion? I think you have to look at sort of scenarios. I think there's a reasonable scenario that uh, politics will get to a place where you're just extending it week to week temporarily. I, do, I wouldn't put a great a high probability on the likelihood that we come up with a comprehensive solution that reassures the global debt market about uh, the seriousness of these, these politicians in Washington, D.C. and across the country. I don't believe that's going to happen that quickly. All right, but having said that, then when you take a look at the bond market, U.S. Treasuries, I believe if you look at the two-year, I think you get 0.3332 percent, the 10-year, 285, 286. The bond market doesn't seem worried. Well, I think the, the central banks and the advanced economies have a lot of power over day-to-day -day movements in, in these prices. And um, I think these central banks have made a decision that they want to actually hang together. Um, the question will be which of these... Some kind of coordinated approach. Right. That they're just trying to kick the can down the road, hoping that eventually a problem will, uh, a solution will present itself. And I don't really see that happening. I think the time for action was back in September 2008 or sooner or earlier than that. And the problems have just reached a level that it's going to be very difficult for the system to cure itself. You sound like you're not very hopeful about the ability of so-called experts to do anything about this. So what are what do all the non-experts out there, people with money, people who are looking to their retirement, what do you recommend they do? I think you want to take money out of out of securities that are dominated in fiat currencies. You've, you've had a great ride off the March 2000 lows in a lot of these securities. You could have a temporary additional ride in, for example, the 10-year U.S. Treasury, which at the, at the depths in March 2009 got around 2%. If that glided lower, you could have a little pop, further pop in that in that play. But that is a very you sound like you're talking about gold and silver and precious uh, metals. Uh, gold is back down to 1500. As it gets below 1500, add to that position. Add to that position, but stay away from fiat currencies. Absolutely. All right. I want to thank you very much, Charles Ortel, managing director, Newport Value Partners. Appreciate it.